it is such an honor to have you in our presence. Really, an event is not an event unless people do attend. And uh, just before I get into my actual talk, I wanted to ask, answer this question that a lot of people ask me. So they say, Lebo, you're running a YouTube channel. There's very powerful content on the channel. You are doing this free of charge. Uh, for those who have been following the movement, they know that we've had a couple of events over lockdown where we looked at case studies. We looked at how to write your report. We looked at things that you should be doing, things you shouldn't be doing. So basically what normally happens is a lot of people ask me, Lebo, you've got children. You've got three children. You've got a full-time job. You are doing this free for us. You, why are you doing this? And I just wanted to start by saying, actually, a lot of people probably do not know that the reason I am um, an engineer today and somebody who holds a BSc is because I was actually uh, funded by the Department of Minerals and Energy back in 2004. So I got a scholarship to go study in Malaysia. So I spent my four years in Malaysia, I got my BSc, came back to South Africa, and unfortunately for me, then discovered that um, this university was not actually a member of the Washington Accord, which is something that really broke, broke my heart, because imagine you do a BSc, you come back, you are told it's, a, it's like equivalent to a BTEC or a diploma. So obviously, that's when my journey started with this registration matter. So I first had to get my education accredited by EXA. This journey was really rough because it, it focuses on fundamentals, you know, what you studied at the university. Then post that, naturally, I was candidate. And the fact that I was candidate already implied that I had a clear intention to become professionally registered. So the reason I do this is because really, I believe in the saying that says, to go far and to go fast you need to stand on the shoulders of giants. So if I have figured out the formula, why would I let other people struggle? I mean, together we are stronger. For people that really follow me, they will see my posts. I always say, together we are stronger. So for me, the thing is, I was giving back to the country. Remember, Jesh already spoke about a shortage of professionals in industry. So for me, I, I was just feeling that if you do that degree, I mean, we all know getting an Application is not easy. Registration is quite straightforward. So I became this person who then put myself out there to help other professionals get uh, registered. So ladies and gentlemen, this is why I have become actually your mentor who is accessible. And for those who make time, we have these classes. In fact, next week uh, on the 4th of September class, we are going to talk about research. How can you use your research work to address the 11 outcomes? Please do join us. With that being said, I wanted to take it a step further and say, um, this voluntary um, noble work that I was doing was further strengthened by the fact that when I did my master's at VETS, I was actually funded by ESCOM. But then I had a reason to plow back some more. And in 2012, I also got a scholarship where I went to Japan and did an on-job training. So as you can see, the government has really worked for me. It has really served me well. And the least I could do is I have the information in my head, share it with the people. So this is why I have literally become um, sort of a mass mentor, because the reason we use Zoom is because you are able to empower a number of people at any given time. So please, ladies and gentlemen, just take the time to join my classes, you will thank yourself later. Then I'm going to then move into my main talk, which is about Inspire the Next Movement. So as Jesh has said, I am the president of Inspire the Next Movement. Um, and this movement literally um, is something that I've been doing since 2009, but I officially launched it last year, August, um, because, you know, um, God kept talking to me, kept talking to me. So eventually I just said, you know what, let me just stop doing this thing in the passages. Let me launch it officially. And really that made a difference because a lot of people were asking me, Leb, where have you been? Some of the people have registered, they failed the first time. And then when they find me and they finally get to register, like if I knew about you two years ago, three years ago, I would have been better off. So then obviously when I launched the movement, it allowed me to, it allowed other people to actually get to know about this service that I do in my past. 
capacity. With that being said, Inspire That Next is literally when I gave birth to this baby, uh, literally I wanted to connect to dream achievers with dream chasers, you know? Standing on the shoulders of giants, that's literally what it is. And really what the movement does is it believes in empowering other people and key what we do there is we really use mentoring and coaching to empower other people. So now I'm about to get into my head as a coach, or probably I love to say as a mentor, not a coach. But I do want to share some lessons from my personal experience and from observations that I've just made in industry. So I want to say to you guys, peer range is really not difficult. And you know, as stipulated in the standards and policies, you really need to have a mentor because if you don't have a mentor, it's going to become difficult. But now I'm going to share with you the secrets or sort of the things that are going to make this journey of getting to your registration very easy. Um, before I even go into that, I want to say just generally in life, when you do have a vision and when you do have goals, it is very crucial to just understand that love is life and life is love. So these three things that I want to share today are literally strategies that you can adopt in this journey to get your peer range. And I call them the love strategies. They are really powerful. Um, the first one is desire. Ladies and gentlemen, desire is the love of self. And what, what is very crucial to understand is that the minute you decide that you want better for yourself is the minute that your wishes become the universe's command. That is just how it is. So when you are chasing peer range, you need to be very, very intentional about what you are going for. So then I'm saying the reason why the, your wishes become the universe's command is because where you focus is where the energy flows. A simple example is a car. You, suddenly you buy this car. When you drive on the road, you see it everywhere. In fact, you see it with the same color as your car. Why? Because suddenly this is something that you are focused on. At this point, you are just wanting affirmation. Do the rest of the world feel that this is value for money? Do you see what I mean about where you focus is where the energy flows? Now I want to say, today is about registering. And obviously the topic is benefits of actually being professionally registered. So then again, I'm understanding that some of the people in the audience are actually candidates that want to get registered sometime soon. So I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, your intentions need to be clear. And the reason for this is because intention energizes. It gets you going. It's like a start. Remember they always say, as long as you start. So when you have clear intentions, you are going to be energized. Then the second aspect is to pay attention. Why is attention important? Attention literally transforms. PR range is one of those career development goals that really deserve your energy, your focus, and your effort. I need to say, without putting in the effort, obviously you are not going to get it. But if you start zooming in this intention, and you focus on it, you are going to achieve it. The second love strategy that I advise is knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, what is, love, what is knowledge? Knowledge is the love of truth. This one for me is core. The reason why most of our candidates today on this platform are not registered is because they have taken other people's fears and they've made them their reality. People tell you stories, their own perceptions about how difficult getting PR range is. And the truth of the matter is, it is not true. Simply for the reason that the requirements that you need to adhere to, the requirements that you need to submit in your application, these things are clearly defined. The NRS system, which is the new registration system, is transparent. It is in the policies, it is in the standards, it is in the discipline specific guidelines. So all you need to do is just prepare accordingly. Then my last tip is wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the love of a positive mindset. 
Now, as much as you are 28 years old, and normally we say wise people are the old people, what I want to say today is that wisdom is actually the ability to choose your thoughts. You must not entertain any thought that is going to weaken you. That's what we have the world for. We've got the society having expectations. We've got the world. We've got life challenges. So the least that you need is for you to entertain a thought that you know very well is going to puncture you in terms of steam or in terms of your motivation, in terms of your focus. Then I want to say the minutes that you make your intentions clear. In this case, we're talking you want your peer range. And you give this goal your attention and your focus. I assure you that you are going to get that peer range. With that being said, life is full of opportunities and life is full of possibilities. But if you are really going around wearing this hat of, an, of a pessimist, somebody told me this, this is what I saw, ba 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 ba. Obviously, you are not going to achieve this goal. So we need to be optimistic. Now, I want to share five sort of high level requirements for those, because today's event is actually not about how do you register, how do you write your report, what you should write in your report. We do have videos that are loaded on my YouTube channel where we've spoken at length about this. Today is literally about sharing the benefits because this is going to energize you and, and give you the energy to get this peer range. But for those who are still working their way towards being peer range, I wanted to share these five whys. These five whys are just like a guide of sort of how do you successfully submit that application? The first why is, why must you get registered? Uh, you know, since we uh, posted this event, I've gotten a lot of um, questions where people are saying, why must we get registered? My thing is, you already have the engineering qualification. So professional registration is just a natural step. It's a natural step that you need to take to advance yourself in the career that you are pushing. For example, I work at ESCOM. ESCOM, you will not become senior engineer until you have your peer range. So naturally, and anyways, when you are doing work, you want the public to trust you. So being professional says, you know, it tells the public that you are somebody who cares about protecting the public and protecting the environment. So it's just a natural step. The second view is who? People need to be very conscious that the onus is on the candidates to ensure that they get trained according to the requirements. But a, a part of who is responsible for this journey is a mentor. If you do not have a mentor, I urge you as soon as yesterday, please get yourself a mentor. And we are understanding that a mentor is somebody who is professionally registered for the simple reason that they need to give you guidance. When you write those reports, they are the people who are going to evaluate it and check whether you've written the right things, you've covered the right content. So everybody on this platform, you are new in industry. What I want you to do is please contact, you can, as long as you get me as a mentor, at the beginning of your career, I can be your mentor. And crucial to mention, you don't need to have one mentor. You can have more than one mentor. A mentor is just somebody who is present throughout your career. At the time that you are getting registered, they are able to be a witness of your competence. And then the, the third W, um, so the third W is actually what? A lot of people ask, okay, so I want to get registered. What do I need? So it just boils down to anybody and everybody who is registered with the Engineering Council of South Africa needs to get experience that is aligned with the 11 outcomes. Everybody, whether you are in mining, whether you are in telecoms, whether you are HV, whether you're building bridges, everybody has to submit the report in compliance with the 11 outcomes. Now, a good tip for all of us to note is that when you get that experience, by the time you get registered, what is important is that the level of responsibility and the level of complexity of your experience 
is according to what is required in the standard for your category. While I'm there, let me just pause and say, because we do have uh, three distinct categories, which is engineers, technologists, and technicians. So what engineers do is they are required to solve complex engineering problems. Technologists are required to solve broadly defined problems and technicians literally solve clearly defined problems. And then the fourth W is where. Where is a very important um, high level guideline to give. So what we need to be doing is this experience should be gathered in industry. So normally what happens is people that are in academic space, so your lecturers, at, they are going to have a challenge registering. Why? The simple explanation for that is that they are not solving engineering problems because that's what PR range is about. So if somebody is actually in academia, what they need to do is they need to do consulting work where that will afford them to go into the industry and actually solve uh, uh, real engineering uh, problems. Um, then we come to the fifth W, which is where. I mean, when, sorry, when. So the first was why, the second was who, the fourth was what, and the fifth was where. Now the last one is when. So what EXA stipulates is that you need a minimum of three years in industry. It's, it's actually... You know, I don't know. I, I, I actually managed to get registered, I think, in three years, eight months, if you subtract with the maternity leave for my firstborn. So the reason I could do that is because I knew what was required. And at any given point, I had a checklist where I checked myself. I said, have I done this outcome? Is it at the right level of responsibility? Is it a complex problem indeed? Then with that, I was submitting three years, four months, and I think uh, processing my application took uh, four years, four months. Then I was registered within uh, uh, four years. A lot of people that I've mentored at ESCOM literally get registered within a period of four years. So what I want to say to you today is you've got this. As long as you want it, you can have it. Then my last line in terms of giving you guidance or giving you advice is you need to detach. After today's event, I want all of you to detach yourself from the first registration. A lot of people have self-limiting beliefs about getting registered as a professional, and it is really not that difficult. The minute you detach yourself from those fears, you will be surprised how powerful you are. And then I am going to leave it And um, okay, so I was going to hand over to Refile, but as per the program, at this point, what I, uh, I'm supposed to be doing is introducing our keynote speaker. I'm going to start with uh, reading uh, the CV of Mr. Sipoma Tontela. Um, Mr. Sipo Matontela is the Chief Executive Officer of the Engineering Council of South Africa, commonly known as EXA, as we are speaking on the platform, uh, and he's been CEO since October 2014. He is a qualified mechanical engineer who is a former executive chair of Nzanti Engineers, a multidisciplinary engineering firm which he founded and has managed over 16 years. He is a BSc Eng graduate from the University of KwaZulu-Natal, and his core discipline include road infrastructure, education, steam application, material and transportation handling, air conditioning, ventilation and refrigeration, pumping application, and general industrial services. Wow. You see what we say about intention. If you are clear about what you want in life, you shall get it. He has a wealth of management experience in the engineering discipline, which include corporate governance, strategy, and strategic leadership. For the duration of his career life, Mr. Matanzela has continued to prove his leadership prodigy within several portfolio in the South African engineering landscape. These accolades include the following. Chairperson of the Department of Public Works, where he is a member of the Audit Committee. SAP VIA, Grid Access, Grid Access Subcommittee. 
He was a central board member. He is chairperson of, he was chairperson of the central contract subcommittee, member of the presidential task team that formed part of the bilateral agreement with the Democratic Republic of Congo. He was president of the National Society of Black Engineers of South Africa. He was chairman for the Council of the Built Environment. He was previous president of the Engineering Council of South Africa. He's a board chair of the Railway Safety Regulator. He is a chief executive officer of Mzanzi Engineers, and he is a non-executive director for NETCOM, PTYLTD. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, our leadership is a leader of note. So it just goes back to what I was saying. When you are clear about your career development, what you want to achieve, you put the goals in place, you will achieve them.